Google Project Fi now includes free VPN access 24-7. And I thought this was kind of interesting. And anytime you use a VPN, whether that be private internet access or uh, Google's VPN service here that we're going to talk about, you're just pushing who you trust down the road. So I trust no one in between me and private internet access, for example, because I want to use private internet access to hide what I'm doing from the carriers that are being used, Comcast or whoever your internet provider is. That's all you're really doing is saying, okay, I'm moving that trust layer over to private internet access. Well, in this case, it's kind of the same thing. You're moving your trust layer to Google. Now, if you're already using a Google phone, Google knows a lot about you, and I'm not here to get into the merits of whether or not you should trust Google with your data. The reality is their business model is monetizing your existence. <laughs> we all know that's clear. But I am a Google Fi user, and I was curious what I would be hiding if I use this VPN. So I have it connected to my network and uh, did some digging here. And it's, it's an interesting read here, and I will uh, say that there's also gonna be a couple offer codes down below, one for private internet access if you wanna sign up and help the channel, and one for Google Fi, same thing if you wanna sign up and help the channel. Not obligatory, but hey, any little bit helps. So I have this set up. And here's the tools I'm using. Ntop PNG running on PFSense, because we're going to dig into some of the traffic with that. Uh, this is just PFTOP. This is the default uh, built-in uh, monitoring for PFSense, so I can like dig into the actual session states and see what's going on. I have a Google Pixel 2 XL phone, and I've got Google Fi turned on with their VPN. Now, let's talk about the network settings real quick here. Uh, this is interesting because when I was playing with it, when I built these rules for my IoT network, I tried only allowing ports 80 and 443 and DNS, and you can, um, it does claim to connect, but none of the service recognizes it and VPN. So that was kind of a bust. I wanted to see if you could try to force it to tunnel the traffic out those addresses. Uh, it won't. It does need to establish a VPN connection, um, and it appears to be using Let's dig into the connection settings here. Uh, port 2153. Uh, when I've connected, that's the destination that it's going for. I'm not super detailing exactly what protocol they're using, but it is a UDP session that they establish here, and that's where all the data comes across. Now, it does use local DNS, so I was checking for DNS leaks, and I've wandered around the web. Uh, the only thing it starts resolving, and right now I'm opening up Twitter, just scrolling through stuff, and I've played some YouTube videos. I've done all kinds of stuff. Uh, matter of fact, I took photos and used the Google Photo app to back them up. Everything works fine, um, and it never goes anywhere. When we dig into like looking at the flows, this is it. This is all you can see from this particular phone right now. Um, not a whole lot of data going back and forth. And we're going to turn it off in a second and show you what it looks like when I don't have this on. Uh, but it, it's pretty neat. Like I said, you're moving the level of trust on a road so people can't tell. You can't tell what app I'm on right now, even though you're watching this in real time. You see the data. Um, and let's go here to open up a video. Uh, hopefully playing a video right now. So you're watching the throughput but you don't know where it's coming from. And this is an interesting thing. I mean, I'm not sure how good a deep packet inspection would do because it really seems to do a solid job of digging this because it's using an encrypted tunnel. VPNs are notoriously hard to uh, reverse engineer depending on you know uh, which VPN they're using, but that's kind of the point of the VPN. It's really hard to figure out. The DNS leaking is usually the first thing you look for because sometimes the data will traverse the VPN, but it will use the local DNS. And I don't see this to be the case at all. These are all the flows coming out of this phone. There's just nothing, no data, just an absolute laugh, lack of things uh, moving around in here. It still is doing the Google things, though. For example, MDNS locally, that is coming up. And uh, what MDNS is, is looking for things like Chromecast and other I, other devices that you maybe want to broadcast to. But it is doing, as it says, hiding your uh, traffic and information. So, you know, I pulled up a YouTube video and the only thing you ever see is this connection here. When you look at the DNS lookups or you dig into uh, peers and where it's talking to, just Google, No, nowhere else. MDNS data, very little, because it's just looking for devices on the same network and everything else just gets encapsulated to here. Now, obviously, like I said at the beginning, um, 
some places do this, they block VPNs. This is actually how a lot of uh, large nation states that will remain unnamed, but this is a common issue with them. They just they know VPNs are, uh, they're not able to see into them, so they simply block them. So that still breaks this. But uh, so far, is you're just moving the level of trust onto Google, but it does as Google claims. It only lets Google have your data. Um, it doesn't let it share with everyone in between, including when you're monitoring on your own network. Now, this is a feature that is exclusive to Google Fi, as I said in the article. Um, and you do it right inside the Google Fi app. And right now, I'm going to, it's called Enhanced Network Beta. I'm going to turn it off. And we're going to reestablish connections and show you how much data you get to see. So one second here. We're going to close all the connections. So here's what it looks like. Make sure it joins back to the network. Boom. <laughs> Just... Boom, we're everywhere. And I just connected. Let's even open. I didn't open an app yet. That was just me connecting to the Wi Fi. Let's. Uh, boom, there. Wow. Okay. It's going crazy here. So let's. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's. Uh, open. You know, I'm going to take a picture real quick. I'll take a picture of what I'm doing right now. Here, take a picture of me. Because uh, I use the Google Photo backup. Google Photo ticking. And. Uh, Actually, something else I'll do is take a screenshot of that Google Fi app where that beta setting is. And we'll screenshot this. And you just see as we go here, if you're watching the screen in the background here, uh, then we'll go back this, make sure the backup's running, back it up to the cloud. S please open up all my data. Let's open up LinkedIn too, so we just have even more data flying around. All these apps opened up. Wow. All right. Let's go back over to the flows. And it's going everywhere. So we're back to knowing. Look, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Google APIs, app measurement, da 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 the Facebook, 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 photos.googleapi. Um, so it, like I said, it does what it claims to do. Um, it does hide everything uh, versus this is what it looks like when you turn it off. It just is a blast of things again. And like I said, if you're connecting to a open Wi-Fi or something like that, this is what whoever's running that open Wi-Fi can learn and see about you. And that's often their goal is to gain some insight uh, in exchange for free Wi-Fi. Once again, monetizing your existence, but maybe at a local level. So this is just interesting. Um, I wanted to test it. It does work as Google says. There's other VPN software you can get for your phone. It all depends on how much you want to hide and you're just moving the trust. So if you choose to go with PIA, it means you're trusting PIA internet to not monetize that data. If you go with uh, Google, you're trusting Google to do what, well, Google does monetize the data. They claim that they don't monetize this, but the reality is you're logged into the Google uh, API. If you're using an Android phone, Google has a absolute ton of information about you anyways because your phone shares it. So that is a choice and an exchange you make for having the services. And that's just how the system works. But thought this was interesting. And like I said, tools used and top. Um, you can find a whole review of this on channel and then PFSense uh, to do a little bit of you know digging into the protocols and how it works on there. And uh, hopefully you found this interesting. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notice. If you're interested in contracting Lawrence Systems for any type of IT services work or consulting work, go ahead and head over to lawrencesystems.com and fill out our contact and get in touch with us. If you would like to help the channel out in other ways, you can use our affiliate links below in the description, or we have a link directly to our Lawrence Systems page where we have a list of different affiliate offers, and it's very appreciated if you use any of those for signing up any of the services, and many of them offer you discounts. If you want to head over to our forums, there'll be a link in the description for our forums, uh, wherever they may be, because we've been looking at different forum platforms, but they'll always be relevantly linked right there. All right, once again, thanks. Leave some feedback and comments below on this video. If you loved it, if you hated it, I try to reply to everyone, the people who hate and the people who love them. So thank you very much and see you next time.